much energy into this. He is, um, okay, looking at the heavyweight division, it's crazy because I just did the Dylan White fight, so I don't want this video to be um, another video talking about, like, the whole heavyweight division as a whole, but he is like Dylan, like Dylan White on the outside looking in, but his resume is better than, better than Dylan White by two fights, I guess. You know, because um, Dylan White has um, Derek Tesor. You know, um, Anthony Joshua, um, Brian Jennings has Luis Ortiz, you know, a fighter that a lot of people, all the heavyweights wouldn't afford at that time, at, the, at that point in time. Um, and uh, a super fight with Vladimir Klitschko, you know, and then Archer Spielka. So he's got, you know, like the, the, the resume is better, but the inactivity. Now, he used to be with Gary Shaw. He was with Rock Nation for a hot minute, but now... Um, I've learned that Rock Nation is, I've been saying, you know, what the word is, but I've learned that it's, 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 you know, obviously I can't confirm it, you know, especially, you know, at my doing the whole media thing. I can't just say they're going out of business. I can't just go out blurting that shit out. But from what I've learned, it's rumored that Rock Nation is on their way out of boxing. Brian Jennings from Philadelphia. Oh, let me pull up the, um, is, uh, advised, managed, you know, um, by... Jay Prince, cool dude, um, interviewed him a few times, always heard about him when I was a kid, and um, another ironic thing is me and Brian Jennings drew up exactly like three blocks away from each other in um, North Philadelphia and Meek Mill too, about another four blocks north, you know, so it's crazy, we all came from the same neighborhood, that's rare as shit. A lot of dead homies from around there, too, man. You know, I used to be terrorizing during those days. But anyway, um, him and Dylan White are not going to fight. I don't see it happen. I don't see it being logical financially for both fighters. I want to see the fight. But see, understand, I'm one of those, um, like, media people or YouTubers or even if you want to say I'm just some nut-ass nigga that be on YouTube thinking he know boxing. I'm, I look at the politics of the sport from what I've learned, you know, and I be thinking, like, it's really, even though it's a good fight, and it's not just with these two fighters, it's fighters that, you know, I watch all the time, you know, I be thinking, like, well, you know, I would love to see these fighters fight, but the money not going to be there, and it wouldn't make no sense for their teams to really make those fights right now, you know, so Dylan White's trying to get Deontay Wilder, he's ranked, he's very close to being um, um, in a mandatory spot, you know, or even possibly fighting for the WBC interim, the way the WBC rankings are set up. With, with Pulev possibly fighting, um, with, with Pulev fighting Anthony Joshua, Luis Ortiz possibly fighting um, Deontay Wilder, Bermain Stavern being the mandatory, so therefore you have Dylan White, who's like number five, and the way the WBC rules work, also I know the rules of the organizations. So a lot of, that's why if you, if you ever see me interview people, like they can't put nothing by me like they do with these casual ass, you know, um, hobby, ha hobby, you know, um, uh, boxing fans, I take that shit seriously, you know, so I don't just be, you know, asking dumb ass shit, you know, so I be knowing about the rules and the ranking, that's why a lot of times, boxers, they always going to tell you the same shit, you know, they're not going to, you know, and, and then they don't know that you know, like, the deal, because they're so used to talking to casual boxing media reporters, but basically, long story short, you know, certain shit can't fly by me like that, so, um, Dylan White is in a situation where if all that happens, he could be ordered to fight for Mains to Vern for that WBC interim if Mains to Vern takes step aside money and Deontay Wilder fights Luis Ortiz. You see what I'm saying? Brian Jennings is in search of a ranking now. Now, one, here's the thing where people don't understand is because, like I said many times before, everything I talk about in my videos, you can go look shit up yourself. I just don't be saying this shit. Top rank is a very thoroughly run organization like they're one of those organizations that um like and, and me knowing from the media into things now like the way press releases are handled press events are handled you know um um just the the, the, the way their platforms social media everything is set up they are they are very thoroughly organized and run I'm not stupid, you know, and I get insulted because people say, you always take enough for Bob M. No, I respect the business of the way things are set up. However, just like any promoters, all these promoters be on some shit, especially when I do that Call Frampton video about him, the situation going on with Heyman and Cyclone. 
you know, and, you know, him leaving, you know, to go. So, listen, man, like, yo, if, if you're a fighter, right, especially a young fighter, just like Shakira Stevenson, remember when he was, you know, with Mayweather and everything like that? If you, you want to sign up for an organization that has the experience to keep you active, top rank keeps their fighters active. And if they go on layoffs, it's usually because they turned down some money or something that they should have took in the first place. You know, look at um, look at Nicholas Walters. Now, once again, I already know this video is going to twist my, y'all going to twist my motherfucking words up and act like y'all know me and be like, ah, you a coon and everything. Nah, the point I'm trying to make is from a business side, in this boxing landscape right now, signing with sign Heyman is not really the best thing to do like it was you know, two, three years ago, it's not. He got too many fighters, too little networks. They scrambling for fights. The purses are not the same anymore. Golden Boy is still a company that's growing, and they have a large, you know, majority of their fighters are largely Latino, and certain fighters wouldn't fit signing with them. And then you got, what, other promoters? That's, you know, that's pretty much the crust of things. Top Rank has that ESPN deal with guaranteed money, and of course they're not going to make the same mistake that Heyman made by making all these A-side versus, you know, Q-side. And No, it wasn't that extreme. It was like A-side versus M-side main event matchups. You know, all these showcase fights. Top Rank's going to keep you active. So, you know, knowing that, that Brian Jennings is with Top Rank, you know, I'm thinking like, okay, all right. You know, so he's probably going to fight again in what, like December or so? You know, maybe against an Andy Ruiz, you know, something like that. Then he'll get back in, in the rankings and be in the mix again. You know, then he could be in title contention, you know, next year. You know, like mid to late next year. Two fights. You know, and he has the platform to stay active. You know. So. My bad. I think it's a good move for him. You know, I'm not going to say I think it's a good move. I know it's a good move, especially when you have a team like Bob Arum and Jay Prince back and you. Come on. Like, how can you lose at anything? You know? How can you How can you lose? Like, how, how do you lose? You know, that's a powerful team right there. So, you know, I didn't know how motherfuckers going to be talking like, oh, well, you know, Bob Arum probably going to be scamming him. Not with Jay Prince by his side. It don't work like, you know, like that's a powerful combination. You know? That's a powerful ass combination. You know, so um, also he's still with John David Jackson. You know, I always wondered, like, what be happening, like, when I guess, you know, I guess it's just not your place to talk about that shit. Like, if your, your trainer have, like, some beef in another fight, do you be like, yo, so what happened with that war shit? And then it starts to give, like, a little more credibility to what Kovalev and them was saying, or more so, like, what war team was saying is weird. Because you got Jay Prince who, who, who manages Brian Jennings and Ward, but then Jennings been working with John David Jackson the last, you know, like what, three fights? Two years now. You know, so, I mean, what, two fights? This is the third one or the second one? I don't know if he was, was he working with him for Klitschko? I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. Did he have Jenkins for Klitschko? I think he did. I think he did. I don't remember. I think he did. Yup, he did. I believe he did. I don't know. But, yeah, man, I'm teaching controversy. I didn't even tell you the guy he fought. I know he knocked out. Some uh, Mart's guy. You know, um, he pretty much just went out there and um, bum-rushed him. You know, it was a comeback fight. So what do you expect? I mean, I was a little bit worried, you know, because uh, uh, Jennings keeps his hands down. You know, he keeps his... um. You know, hands down, but it's like I can't, I couldn't really judge because it's like, all right, well, I understand he didn't want to go to distance with this dude, but it was one clean shot he caught. I was like, oh, bro, don't come back, you know, because you'd be scared for certain fighters. You know, they'll come back, you know, and then, you know, get knocked the fuck out by like some journeyman. And it's like, damn, like, look at Yurikas Gimbo a couple weeks ago. And the fight, he almost lost a couple weeks ago, last weekend, in fact, you know, um, and then the fight before against Robinson uh, Castell Castellanos. You know, he lost, you know, to journeyman. So, you know, you'd be scared when these fighters be coming back off these long layoffs, man. You'd be thinking like, oh, you know, but looking at the landscape, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if we see Brian Jennings versus, um, versus, um, 
uh, versus Andrew Ruiz. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised, you know. But him versus Brian Jennings, I don't see. It. I mean, him versus uh, Dylan White, I don't see it, you know. Oh, let me tell you this dude name. Let me tell you this dude name. Also, to watch the fight, go to the ESPN app, man. If you have ESPN, stop being a, a computer illiterate motherfucker, man. You'd be surprised how many people tell me like, "Yo, how do I get the ESPN app, man?" Yo, do you got ESPN at home? Yeah. Motherfucker, you got the ESPN app. Download the shit, call your cable company, or whoever it is, or whoever paying your fucking cable bill, and ask them for the fucking email login. Voila, you have ESPN. On your phone, on your tablet, and it's a nice ass app. You can watch the fights now if you have the ESPN app. Like, they're saved on, on there. Go, like, download, it's called ESPN Watch. Download ESPN Watch. You know, and um, and um, go to where it says sports, and then go to boxing, and you'll see it's right there. It's like three hours long or some shit. It's the undercard. You know, all the way up until where the main card, Crawford and Dungle, started at uh, 10 p.m. on ESPN. You know, so the last fight, I believe, on the card was the Mike Alvarado card. But, yo, the card was the card was nice as far as, you know, it being exciting. you seeing people get beat the fuck up. You know, Mike Alvarado. Yo, it was some nice knockouts. The Dylan White fight was funny and shit. BY did the next fight, knock dude the fuck out, make left this big ass red ass mark on dude forehead. <laughs> you know, Mike Reed kind of stunk it up though a little bit. He ain't stink it up, I guess because I was like uh feeding into like his trainers, you know, talking about especially his pop, like, yo, knock him out, why are you going to distance with this dude? Then by like round six and seven, I was like, Yeah, why is he going to distance with this dude? Then the dude had this big ass rip in his trunks with an asshole part B. This is was like, you know what I mean, a little too awkward. You know. As I said, Mike Alvarado knocked the shit out of dude. You know, I got to watch the Secure Stevenson fight in detail because my computer had fucking crashed. I've been out for like fucking 18 hours, man. My computer, that's why these videos are late. My computer fucking crashed. I had two computers crash in one week. Editing all these videos and shit, man. Or something is going on that I got to fix. So, you know, I got to send, I got to send the powerful one back. You know, you know, shit's going on, man. But I got a command center. Did I see my command center? You know, it's a lot of shit. Fucking one, two, three, four screens. These three working. Fucking iPad, two phones, TVs, fucking wires and gadgets and shit that I don't even know how to use. But anyway, the Tissue Controversy, man. This is Tissue Controversy Live. Please subscribe. I cover every single next fight live. Uh, please subscribe.